telecast of Cubs baseball here on CSN comes to you Friday from the bleachers. We'll be out there at Wrigley Field. 12:30 starts our coverage. Marlins and the Cubs first pitch at 1:20. Cubs pregame live at 12:30 is brought to you by Fields Auto. I'm gonna buy a floppy hat for that one. I don't think so. Mark throwing Bobby Parnell. Making his return from Tommy John surgery appeared on opening day last year and then had the elbow reconstruction and we'll see what he's done in his 2015 return at 22 saves for the Mets in 2013 and six appearances since uh, rejoining the ball club and the numbers are good the velocity is down as you might expect post surgery is a guy who back in the day with high 90s. So far this year, that fastball is sitting around 92 miles an hour on average. He also has a curveball and a change. Here we go. Fouled off. As he worked his way back, he pitched in 15 rehab games and he didn't get the Mets too excited with his performance there. He had an 11.57 ERA, allowed 18 earned runs and 14 innings of work. 6-3-205. That's a good curveball right there. 0-2. Oh Cornell hails from Salisbury. North Carolina went to Charleston Southern University. Debuted in 08. Whole career with the Mets. Drafted in 2005 in the ninth round. Is Charleston Southern in the southern part of Charleston? I've never been there. I was curious. Yeah, or is it southern because it's kind of in the south part oh. of the country. It's called Charleston Charleston southern? southern University in Charleston South Carolina. Oh. Is there a Charleston Northern. I'm going to guess not. These are questions. There's a college of Charleston. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can do the Charleston. And Sean Gil Martin. Two and two on Chris Bryant. Now it's full. Bryant got it started last time up, drew a leadoff walk on four pitches from Jonathan Neese. Went to second on a little tapper back to the mound, scored on the Caesar double. Parnell being cautious here as well. And boy, it's something you usually, you know, once through 98, and now you're throwing that fastball at 90 91. It's hard to trust that pitch. My guess is he's going to try to get him out outside of the strike zone, either with an elevated fastball or a curveball down. So if you're going to go fastball away here. Ooh, that's pretty confident, but he, he dialed it up a little bit. Got that one to 94. So there's a little more there when he needs it, apparently. See, they've stayed away from Bryant until that pitch. He's probably thinking curveball a little late on the heater. This is how the run scoring inning in the sixth. Oh, nice began. night for Brian. Yeah, he singled uh, back in the third and then worked two walks. And this one was most impressive. You think he might be pressing a little bit. He's spit on that curveball and took his base. Two walks and a fly out for Castro. See Denorfia on deck behind him.
Twins and Reds have not yet started. So they've been in a uh, rain delay for a couple of hours. Bill Hughes and Anthony DiSclafani, the scheduled pitchers. Double play ball. Six to four to three. Two outs, nobody on here in the Cubs eight. After this Saturday night's matchup with the Miami Marlins, Weber Sauces and Seasonings presents the first ever post-game fireworks show at Wrigley Field. All fans are encouraged to stick around and enjoy the 4th of July festivities. For more information or to purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com. Now DeNorfia with two gone. Three of the four Cubs wins in that series at Wrigley were by one run. I'm going to trust uh, Glenn on Twitter. Charleston Southern is located 18 miles northwest of downtown Charleston. Okay. Apparently not a, ge a lot of geography majors there. Norfia chased one in the dirt. Parnell works a scoreless eight. Mets will bat in the bottom of the eighth. Here comes Pedro Stroke. I love shopping at Benny's Beverage Depot. Where else am I going to find almost 9,000 wines like Chateau du Papa, Chansonnier, Montrachet, and Gabadou Gats de Italia? I screwed up at the end. If you can't find it at Benny's, it's probably not worth drinking. I like my seafood like I like my vacations. Tropical. And at Red Lobster's Island Escape, I can try new dishes like the Island Seafood Feast with crab, lobster, jumbo, sweet and spicy, and coconut shrimp. So hurry in. It'll be gone before you... At DirecTV, we believe giving a smile to a sick child is the least we can do. We believe logging tens of thousands of hours building homes and playgrounds defines our true spirit that providing job opportunities for disabled Americans is the best way to celebrate diversity. And that being named one of the top 50 most community-minded companies in the U.S. means we're doing something right. Because we believe there's no place for ordinary when you entertain the extraordinary. Don't just watch TV. Direct TV. To some of us, home improvement isn't a chore. It's a privilege and a satisfying part of owning your own home. The tools and supplies you choose need to be able to deliver the same quality that you demand of the work you do. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we understand, and we want to help you achieve the best job possible. For your next home repair or home improvement project, we'd like to help you make your life better with genuine value. From Blaine's Farm and Fleet. I'm David Kaplan in our Comcast Sportsnet studios in downtown Chicago with a Sportsnet Central update. Brandon Saad has been traded by the Blackhawks to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Saad set to be a restricted free agent tonight. The team couldn't come to an agreement on a long-term deal. They were far apart. In exchange, Hawks received four players, including Artima Nisimo, who the Hawks hope to sign to a long-term five-year extension. More later at Sportsnet Central. Now back to Len and J.D. We'll get the eighth, and we could see Jason Mott in the ninth. Some roles have changed out in the bullpen. I think Joe likes to be able to kind of mix and match. Yeah, that's a fluid situation. Uh, and Strope, uh, blown save charge to him last time out. He gave up the uh, pinch hit home run to uh, Greg Garcia in St. Louis on uh, Friday. It was a three to two loss. He had been going along quite nicely prior to that outing and 10 or 11 consecutive scoreless appearances prior to that one. By the way, the uh, Chris Bryant walked nine times this year. Now he has gone 0 2 to 4 2. He and Curtis Granderson have the uh, major league lead in that category. 
How about that? Yeah. Maybe someday, years from now, that will be known as a Bryant. <laughs> right. Kind of like the complete game less than 100 pitches is a Maddox. Johnny Monell, left handed swinging catcher. In the pinch tonight, 0 and 2 from Stroke. Bench has not been productive at all for the Mets. Their pinch hitters collectively batting 161. That's dead last in the NL. Off fly right field. The Norfi has got it. Seven hits combined tonight for these two teams. Cubs have the only run. Yeah, it's, it's said at the outset of the ball game that might set the over under at five total runs in this game. I guess I went a little high. Well, we're not done yet, but the Cubs hope scoring is finished. Castro behind second. Lobs over. Lagaris is out. That's last hit was a Daniel Murphy fourth inning double. Kyle Hendricks retired the leadoff man in every inning that he pitched. Open has recorded five consecutive outs. Jerry's familiar is the righty on the left. Gil Martin, the lefty on the right. Got off to a great start, 13 and 3, including an 11 game winning streak. They had a 10 and 0 homestand. But after that sizzling start, they've gone 27 and 34. And Terry Collins has called this a critical stretch, a critical point in their season. Next nine games against winning clubs. Gone to the six man rotation. There's another quick pitch from Stroke. Ball strike three to get Granderson. Bullpen perfect. Rondon and Stroke for the seventh and the eighth. That'll take us to the ninth. Still 1 0. can't charge for smiles. That's probably why we're the only airline still giving them away. It's true, all airline employees have attitudes. Ours just have the good kind.
inspires how you do things. And when that inspiration comes from a place this refreshing, this majestic, this... Well, you get the idea. Coors Light, born in the Rockies. It's just an egg. It's just an egg laid by a hen, then inspected and collected over and over and over again. Cleaned and boxed and loaded, so when it finally arrives at your McDonald's, it's ready to begin. Cracked and griddled and sizzled and placed on an Egg McMuffin, which is a nice start to your day every now and then. It's just an egg, but oh, what an egg it is. New McDonald's Bacon and White Cheddar McMuffin. White cheddar, thick-cut bacon, and a freshly cracked egg. Get one in a small McCafe coffee for just $3.50. Left-handers Sean Gill Martin, 25 years old, will pitch here in the ninth inning. Cubs lead one nothing. Well, Gill Martin is uh, allowed 17 hits in 24 innings. He's walked 10. He's only allowed the one home run. A buck 88 ERA has a real good changeup, and he's been really good against right-handed hitters. In a large part because of that changeup. Would fall into the category of a crafty left hander not overpowering. Good night for Matt Caesar the New Jersey native hometown about three hours south of City Field Cape May New Jersey. One strike on him single double knocked in a run in the sixth inning and there's only been one run in this ball game. He bunted and then he ran right into the ball. It's foul. Cubs uh, just couldn't seem to get the big clutch hit in that weekend series in St. Louis. I haven't exactly knocked the cover off the ball here tonight, but one big swing of the bat may be all they need here tonight. It came with two outs and Chris Bryant standing on second base. Tutorial on wearing stirrups if you're a young baseball player. You see Sean Gilmartin. The opening, the big opening, goes in the back. Okay. Uh, he's, he's straight old school. He's got those pants uh -huh. bloused, got the sock folded down over the pant. Swing and a miss for the first out. Jason Mott getting ready. Jason and uh, his former teammate John Jay hosted a charity. Cornhole challenge event on the Sunday. Don't have the final tally on how much money they raised, but he said they had a better turnout this year than last year. Last year he was a Cardinal. And some Cup teammates showed up. Nicely done. Raising money for cancer research and families affected by cancer. Yeah, that was very nice. Obviously a great cause and uh, players from both teams there. What was the, the slogan? The uh, rivals on the field, but teammates off something to that effect. That sounds right. Yep. Uh, benefited the Jason Mott Foundation in Make-A-Wish, Missouri. Ross strikes out swinging. Yeah, it's tough. You know, when you get traded, when you sign with a new team you, you put down roots in a certain place if you've been there for a while and you know the uh, people there in St. Louis appreciate the fact that Jason continues to get back there and hopefully he'll be in Chicago for a while and mm -hmm. yeah, he's very well received when he came into pitch in St. Louis as Coglin keeping his game games played streak alive. With a late pinch hit appearance. 
A lefty may provide a little more competition for Gil Martin. That changeup against the righties is such a good weapon. I don't know if it's as effective against left-handed hitters. It's a guy that threw out his minor league career that started with the Braves in 2011 was pretty much exclusively a starting pitcher. 139th consecutive appearance for Chris Coglin. That would be Cal Coglin. The next closest player in the National League is Curtis Granderson, who tonight played in his 100th consecutive contest. be surprised if the Cal Ripken streak was never broken. I don't know if clubs would want to be in that position again where you're kind of you're at the mercy of the streak and you want to give a guy a day off and right feel like you can't. Yeah whatever that number is whether it's 600 700 games maybe even a thousand. There is a certain point where you almost have to stop it before it does it becomes a gets a life of its own. Yeah. yeah. Because I look as impressive a streak as that was there had to be days. Where his manager and at one point it was his dad right who yep. probably wanted to sit him. Oh yeah. And couldn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly uh, you know Cal obviously a great performer but. You know he would have benefited from the occasional day off. That's Jason Mott standing still. <laughs> he just. He's not one of those guys who just stands and watches without doing something like tossing the ball to himself or starting to fire a bullet like the old catcher would. And here he comes, leading one nothing to the bottom of the ninth. At Domino's, we're known for delivery, but we want to be great at carry out too. That's why we're offering a deal that would get a lot of people in the door and help us become carry out experts. Put your store to the test and carry out large three topping pizzas for only $7.99 each every Monday through Thursday. For over 50 years, Discount Tire has been the place where America saves on tires. One thing we can rely on in this house is UVerse high speed internet. I've been streaming movies all day without any problems. UVerse high speed internet has brought much needed reliability to our lives. It's got reliability you can rely on. AT&T UVerse high speed internet. With 99.9% .9 reliability, it's one thing you can rely on. Hey, Ralph Punzel. Oh, hey, Ronnie. Where are you headed? Great Clips. You're getting a haircut? I checked in already. He's in their online check-in. I'm dying to check. -in. It saves you time. You're getting a haircut. Why? Thinking about to apply to astronaut school. That's cool. OK, I'll uh, see you, Ronnie. Next time, save time. Download the online check-in app today. Great Clips. It's going to be great. Our Benny's Beverage Depot toast of the game is Kyle Hendricks. He was a little better than Jonathan Meese. He went six innings, gave up no runs. Yeah, we talked so much about the sinker, but I think tonight it was, it was the changeup, the ability to work that pitch off the outside corner. And then he used the fastball as a surprise pitch. You saw it there with the elevated fastball to get the foul tip strike out at Tejada. Punched out uh, Granderson early on with a, a good two seam fastball. So, very good start for Kyle Hendricks here tonight. Rondon and Strope have done their job, and now it falls to Jason Mott to finish it off. 34 times 
He has trotted out there. He's five and one with a 3.14 ERA, and he's looking for his third save in his third try. Two, three, four to bat here for the Mets in the ninth. 42 saves with St. Louis in 2012. Did not pitch the following year after Tommy John surgery. Came back last year. He's got just a little bit better. About every time out here as a Cub. Tejada, Duda, and Murphy for the Mets. Tough one for John Neese. We had mentioned coming in eight winless starts in a row. This will be nine. Best he can get is a no decision as he went seven and gave up one run. Fastballs and cut fastballs from Mott. 95 and a strike. Pitch. One and one. Something kind of blissful about the way Jason Mott approaches his craft in that nothing about it is subtle. It's just kind of like a 10 year old kid. I'm just going to grab it. I'm a pitcher. OK, I'm going to just throw it as hard as I can. Yeah, if, if, if he were a tool, he would be a jackhammer. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> nothing subtle. Did you just call him a tool? No, no, okay. that's I, yeah, I that's don't want to start any rules. I was as I was saying that that's exactly what <laughs> if he were an implement, he would be a jackhammer. The one two is fouled off and you like the idea of the game being started by the meticulous and prepared Kyle Hendricks not that Mott's not prepared but it's how he goes style, about yeah. his business yeah. and then Mott coming in throwing as hard as he possibly can. Yeah and it's you know the challenge for Jason is just to make sure he he does his work downstairs he can beat you with that elevated fastball but yeah he needs to get down there from time to time too. And, Keep those hitters honest. Got him with the cutter. We're out number one. It's always the downside with a guy like Mott late in the game in a one run game. You know, you throw that elevated fastball, he's a fly ball pitcher, and you're always worried about somebody running into one. So with these dangerous hitters, and you wouldn't put Tejada in that category, but you certainly would do to. You got to be a little more discerning with your approach, stay away from his power. Off the plate outside, ball one. Most left handed sluggers, that power is, is down and in. The other thing about Jason, he's got the closer thing going, right? A little intimidating, he's a little quirky. He seems to be built for this type of job. Got some style on the ground and right into the shift. That's Russell. Two outs. The way Joe puts it, when it gets hot, that doesn't mean the temperature. It means the situation. Jason's the same guy. Same guy, yeah. yeah you, you might beat him, but well, he's not going to panic. Two outs, ninth inning. Daniel Murphy, first game off the DL. Mets have four base runners tonight. Three of the four have come with two outs and nobody on. Yeah, so their their opportunities have really been limited as a result. They have not been able to sustain any sort of rally in an inning. Popped him up. 
Castro long run and it's going to make the seats. Three Cubs in the area. Fair amount of foul territory in front of the dugouts, but then that quickly evaporates as the wall kind of diagonally chews up much of foul territory. As you get into the outfield. Challenge fastball. Murphy's had good swings tonight. Lined out first time up, long double. He thought he'd gone deep back in the fourth. Straight away center field, but it stayed in the ballpark. Otherwise, we'd be tied. Fowler underneath. Cubs win. Cubs win a combined three hit shutout tonight as they created some magic <laughs> in a yeah. one nothing yeah, there final. Was, there was a magician in the clubhouse before the game as Joe Madden tried to lighten the mood, and then there was some magic on the mound from Kyle Hendricks and his uh, mates coming out of that Cubs bullpen, completely shutting down this Met lineup here tonight. So the losing streak is over and your final score tonight the Cubs won and the Mets nothing we're back with you Friday 1230 for a pregame coverage for beautiful Wrigley Field will be out of the bleachers Marlins and Cubs on CSN now for JD and our entire crew here in New York but Casper inviting you to stay tuned as Blue Cross Blue Shield Cubs post game live is next. All right, welcome into our Blue Cross Blue Shield Cubs post game live. Cubs get it done with outstanding pitching tonight from Kyle Hendricks and the relievers. David Kaplan, he's Todd Hollinsworth. Kyle Hendricks had been leaving the ball up his last few starts. I talked to Chris Basio earlier today. He said, We've been working hard on getting heavy tilt and getting that ball down in the zone. It worked tonight. Oh, absolutely. Very deliberate. That's what you saw. I mean, he, almost like he was thinking it through. Great tempo, great uh, pace to his game. I mean, he didn't slow down when he got in a little bit of trouble, and there wasn't much trouble that he got himself into. But a few times where he had a few base runners on, it didn't all of a sudden come to a screeching halt. This was a man that was, with each pitch, purposefully keeping the ball down in the strike zone. It was outstanding tonight. The changeup working, down low and away to the right-handed hitters. Two-seam fastball in on the lefties and down. He had it working tonight. Great results, one nothing win. All right, Holly and I will break it all down for you and show you how the Cubs got their one run, all they needed to win it tonight. Cubs beat the Mets one nothing. We'll be right back with a Blue Cross Blue Shield. Cubs postgame live. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Hey, buddy. Huh? Come smell those flowers. Huh? Don't be shy. Come on. <laughs> Jack Link's Jerky. Feature Wild Side. video walls from prism learn more at prism.com the more you move the more you sweat degrees motion sense technology keeps you fresh with every move 
It has unique micro capsules that contain fragrances. Friction breaks the capsules, releasing bursts of freshness all day. Whether you're meeting a deadline, grabbing a bite, or heading out for the night, Motion Sense, protection to keep you moving. Degree, it won't let you down. Every auto insurance policy has a number. But not every insurance company understands the life behind it. Those who have served our nation have earned the very best service in return. USAA, we know what it means to serve. Get an auto insurance quote and see why 92% of our members plan to stay for life. Cubs Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Honda dealers, as reliable as the cars themselves. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Audi, truth in engineering. Menards, save big money at Menards. And by Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. This is Blue Cross Blue Shield Cubs postgame live. A one-two on the way. Fly ball center field, Dexter Fowler underneath. Cubs win! Cubs win a combined three-hit shutout tonight. Cubs get it done. 1-4-0 over 0-3-0. Cubs 40 and 35. Metropolitan fall to 40 and 38. Hendricks over Nice. Jason Mott is third save. Hello, welcome in. Cubs Post Game Live presented by our great partners, the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. He's Todd Hollinsworth. I'm David Kaplan. Offense not great. Jonathan Neese, who was being scouted by the mm -hmm. Cubs reportedly tonight for a potential trade. Uh, offense wasn't great, but Matt Caesar delivered when he had to. Well, he did, and, and that's really the key. Comes up with a couple big hits, although his first one jumped on some first pitches. That was what was great to see. But I'll say this. I mean, Chris Bryant drew the walk. He got the inning rolling that scores the eventual winning run. It is a one nothing win. And, uh, you know, you look at the box score today. You know, they struck out eight times. They did walk five. That's the one thing that certainly catches my attention. So there were some at-bats, and guys grinded some things out. Yes, the strike zone was a little bit bigger. They were swinging at some pitches outside the strike zone, but tend to give credit where credit is due. Both pitchers good in this one. All right, let's check out our sports authority play of the game. Cubs get it done with Matt Caesar at the dish. And the young man who has really good speed and has more pop than you realize, smokes this ball to the wall in left, and that's enough to plate the only run of the ball game. Yeah, there you go. Chris Bryant uh, had worked his way over there to second base uh, after that leadoff walk right there. You know, ah, you see a little click right there. That's fun to see. That's what you do on an off-speed pitch. He gets a first pitch, get me over curveball right there. I absolutely believe he was sitting dead red. I think anybody in that situation would be, especially since it's the first pitch of a second at bat. Uh, but that being said, keeps the hands back. That's the key right there. You see Caesar do it kind of a little flinch forward and then lock and hold. That's that little pause. You feel like it's an eternity as a hitter, but it's not. It's about a half a second, but sees the ball out of his hand, hangs it up in the zone, keeps those hands back and able to drive it off the left field wall. Great swing. All right, a UPS store taking care of business player of the game. Got to give it to Kyle Hendricks. Six innings of really outstanding pitching. Just three hits, one walk, six strikeouts. Pitch count 90, 52 for strike. And he had that ball dipping and diving all night long. Would you be all right if I used the word conviction tonight? I mean, that's what it looked like he was pitching with. Uh, this was a man on a mission. Uh, right there, pitching up in the zone with purpose. That's somebody who he was pitching down. Down, down, down. Tejada, so earlier in the uh, game and earlier in those at-bats, you saw the two-seam fastball, you saw the changeup working, lived at the bottom of the strike zone. City Field is a very difficult, uh, obviously, field to hit home runs. The Mets offense has struggled this year. They win at home, though. They're a very good team at home, but they're typically low-scoring ball games. So going into this one, you knew that that was a possibility. But the key to success at City Field is keeping the ball down in the strike zone. We did see a few long fly balls that in some other ballparks may have carried off the wall or carried out, but it's such a big park, especially in the middle. You do a great job if you keep it on the ground and play to the middle of the field. I think you got to give a ton of credit, not only obviously to Kyle Hendricks, but to Chris Basio, who's one of the best pitching coaches in mm -hmm. all of baseball, and he's worked exceptionally hard to get Kyle Hendricks right 
after a couple of starts where he just couldn't find his sink. Yeah, well, I think there was a lot of purpose behind his pitches tonight, and like I said, that deliberate. It's the tempo for which he pitched tonight that looked a little bit different than you know where he was searching before in a few of his last starts where you know he, he kind of slowed himself down. He kind of was like, all right, what am I doing? What am I trying to work myself through? He knows how to throw his pitches. He knows where his arm slot is. He couldn't figure out what the key was to getting it down in the zone, and it was almost finishing those pitches, and you saw it tonight. As he got through the zone, everything was had finish on it. Two-seamer down, change-up down, a little bit of cut, but everything working off the plate, but again, from the knees down. And again, you will find a ton of success. I learned it from one of the best ever. Hall of Famer Greg Maddox talked about it all the time. I can get away with throwing four-seam fastballs to both corners if I keep it down. And the reality is, he's right. You can. Big league hitters struggle with that part of the zone, unless you're a guy who likes to uppercut. Interestingly enough, the best swings of the night were Daniel Murphy. Daniel Murphy, that is his swing path. He swings up into the strike zone. He actually had a couple hard hit balls against Hendrick, but everybody else struggled with him. All right, let's talk about the Cubs bullpen. They went three scoreless tonight. Save goes to Jason Mott, but Hector Rondon and Pedro Strope, both very, very good. No, I love it. I kind of love this angle where, you know, you've got hit Kyle, Kyle pitching at 88, 89, 90 miles an hour on the night, and then you bring in the flamethrowers, you know, it, which, you know, and they completely changed the game plan. Great to see Rondon just firing bullets tonight. Everybody really doing it. Mott, Rondon, Strope, guys coming in, throwing hard. This uh, Mets offense struggling. Don't step off the accelerator. I usually say it with the offense. I'm going to say it with the bullpen tonight. Outstanding. Didn't walk anybody. And also, uh, that is absolutely a key. Didn't give the Mets any chance to gain any kind of momentum by just giving a free pass either. All right, time for our Cholula Hot Sauce pitching recap of tonight's ball game. We'll take a look at two starting pitchers that both did their job exceptionally well. Look at Jonathan Neese on the right. Seven innings, a four-hit, one-earned run baseball. Struck out five. He did walk four. That's the one area that would concern you a little bit for the Mets. Kyle Hendricks, six innings, three hits, no earned runs, just one walk and six Ks. Well, Neese was outstanding as well. Take a moment and talk about him just a little bit. Seven innings, four hits. Did a, a fantastic job. Everything that we just said about Kyle Hendricks uh, really do apply to Jonathan Neese. He knows how to pitch in this ballpark. But watch where all this action is. Working away from Anthony. And I say this sometimes. It's very interesting. You know, when you throw 80, 88 to 89 miles an hour, he throws his cutter at 85. Uh, Hitters see the pitch longer. They've got more time to react, and I think that's what Jonathan and even Kyle do prey on when it comes to the hitters. You know, when you throw 96 above the strike zone, you won't watch hitters chase too often, but if you throw 88 up there, interestingly enough, hitters will chase because they get a good look at it and they believe they can get to it. And I think you saw that a, a lot tonight. Jonathan East did a fantastic job feeding off his two-seam fastball, getting to the cutter, keeping the ball down in the zone, even working in that slow curveball, but still working down at the bottom of the strike zone. So. Yeah, it's kind of messing with some of the timings tonight with a lot of the hitters. All right, time for a break here on Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Holly and I will be right back with more. Cubs Post Game Live is presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. Was close. Excuse me, uh, you realize this television's on a channel with men in silk robes slapping each other? And maybe we could just switch it to where the athletes are wearing shoes? Oh, this gentleman and this gentleman want to know if we can change his channel. I love karate. He, he doesn't like karate. What? No, me? You don't what? like karate? I do I love it. Are you kidding? I've been telling you how much I want to join a dojo. Could you recommend a dojo? Buffalo Wild Wings, 21 sauces and seasonings, tons of tops, and countless flat screens. Nowhere sports more alive. Your TV and your internet. Experience the two together like never before with a special offer from Xfinity. And lock in your rate for two full years. Only Xfinity from Comcast gives you the X1 Entertainment Operating System with the cloud-based X1 DVR. So now anything you record is available on all your devices. Combine that with the fastest in-home Wi-Fi and get the most out of your entertainment. Get the X1 Triple Play for $99 a month for two full years. And now get even more internet speed, up to 75 megabits per second. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit Xfinity.com today. 
Bring on the big arms, the bigger bats, and the biggest moments of the season with the MLB Extra Innings Package on DirecTV. Get up to 100 live games a week in your rotation. Feel the heat of every pitch in HD. Go deep with up to eight games previewed on one channel. And with MLB.TV included, catch all the action on over 400 devices for the same game-changing price. It's a whole new ball game when the season follows you. Swing for the fences and watch your favorite team no matter where you live with MLB Extra Innings on DirecTV. And here we go, folks. It's your favorite hot dog bun, mustard, and overpriced watered-down beer. Are you sure you want to eat all that? Because you already weigh more than your team's batting average. Let's just toast to our anniversary. Oh, no, it's corked. Let's just watch the game. I tweeted all of your friends to come over, but I guess no one showed up. Just like at Mobile Phone Park. That's okay. I invited one of your friends, too. There's a long drive, and it's out of here. Give a real anniversary gift this year. Escape to the Champagne Lodge in Willowbrook. Just 25 minutes southwest of Chicago. Time for Four Seasons Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing. Who's hot? Who's not hot? NL Central last seven days. Who's hot? How about Jordy Mercer of those red hot buckos? Four doubles, five knocked in, and hit 423. For the Cardinals, Matt Carpenter scuffling. Three for 21, hasn't even touched home plate, and a buck 43. Left. Welcome back to Cub Post Game Live, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Let's take a look at our Cubs lineup tonight for manager Joe Madden. After a magician worked the opening clubhouse, <laughs> This is how that Cubs lineup fared tonight. Dexter Fowler had a knock. Chris Bryant had a knock and two doubles. My key performer tonight, Matt Caesar, had two hits and four at bats mm -hmm. and nothing else throughout the lineup. <laughs> That's right. Well, again, I mean, the walks, you know, I, the at bats were better, and I guess that's the game plan. If you think back, I mean, Jonathan Neese just faced the Cubs it was a couple weeks ago at Wrigley Field, and they put a whooping on him the second time through the lineup. That did not happen tonight, so you say tip your hat to Jonathan Neese. He made the adjustments there, but the Cubs are kind of going through a thing right now. As a team, yeah, the strike zone is a little bit bigger. They're trying to hit their way out of some things, but good to see Caesar get the start tonight, jumped on a couple of first pitches. As a player, kind of being in his situation before, I used to think along those lines. You know, when you kind of jump into a lineup and they're maybe not preparing for you so much later in my career when I was a fourth outfield, Fielder, you know, I always believed there was always a great opportunity to contribute that night because I'm not a regular. I'm not a guy that's out there every day. I slide into the lineup, get a couple of first pitches that I'll be able to jump on it. You know, I give a lot of credit to Caesar for being ready to hit when he got in there. You think back to those two at bats that he had tonight, and he basically had the two hardest hit balls by the Cubs tonight. They were on first pitches, one on a fastball, one on a big slow curveball, as we talked about the game winner. Uh, just being ready to hit. So, I mean, that's what you do as a, as a reserve. You keep yourself ready to play, and when you get in there, try to take advantage of those opportunities. All right, Bryant's eighth inning walk. He went from an 0-2 count to ball four for the ninth time this season. You talk about a guy who's not afraid to hit with two strikes. Well, and you know what? It, this is really a great subject to talk about. I, I'm glad we're bringing this up tonight because, again, this is about who Chris Bryant is moving forward, everybody. This isn't about light tower power. This isn't about hot stretches and what he can do and how many runs he can drive in or, you know, how good he is on the base pass. This is about offensive approach. And because we're talking about it this way, we talk about it over the course of his season, what you start to pick up on is this is how his mind works. He doesn't give it bats away. I mean, even down two strikes. This is not a guy that's, you know, as we've talked about many times, he has his moments where he expands the strike zone, but he battles. He understands what it takes at the major league level to get yourself back into account, and he puts together these quality at bats. This is something you bank on moving forward. That's what excites me about it. Again, it's not about the homers, not about the RBIs. It's about the approach, and it really, I, let's be honest, it's the one thing that has surprised me about him so much this year. All right, we'll be right back. Cubs Post Game Live continues, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield. the love in this summer at McDonald's with the double combo for just $2.50. We're good together. Choices made right now. This very moment will decide the rest of your life. With consequences that can never be reversed. If you drink and drive, you will lose your license. You will go to jail. Complete your landscaping projects with Mastermark Lawn Edging from Menards. This yard and garden edging looks beautiful and stays firmly in place. Right now, get two 20-foot rolls for only $6. 
Add an elegant masonry appearance to your exterior walls with easy-to-install Novik vinyl siding panels. Stacked stone panels have an authentic, seamless appearance and are available in six multi-tone colors. Only $2.99 a square foot and $14.95 per five-square-foot panel. Save big money at Menards. Cubs Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by Cholula Hot Sauce, the flavorful hot sauce with the iconic wooden cap. As I look out today, I'm moved by your hope for a bright future. A future where student debt crushes your dreams and where you move back home, share a bathroom with your younger sister. In short, good luck. You'll need it. At Fifth Third Bank, we were curious. Could we help grads find the jobs they want? That's why we're giving away $1 million in job search training. Enter at 53.com slash brand of you. Fifth Third Bank, the curious bank. Your old air conditioner is costing you money. The summer's heating up. Stay cool with a new air conditioner from Four Seasons. And right now, get a new energy-saving air conditioner from just $24.95 installed. Furnace and AC combos from just $36.95. Plus, enjoy five years interest-free financing. Call today for your free estimate on a new AC from Four Seasons. For all the right reasons, call 866-4-SEASONS. It's only an egg, freshly cracked at morning light. A real delight when you take that very first bite. Introducing McDonald's Bacon and White Cheddar McMuffin. Get one in a small McCafe coffee for just $3.50. All right, let's take a look at the Blue Cross Blue Shield key to the Cubs' victory. Howie? I know we just had a post game tonight, but this was legitimate. Big hit, big spot. I wasn't kidding around. It was about the offensive woes. Can't we, we my guy, hey, my key performer. <laughs> we talked about this on SDL a little bit. Yeah, this is what the offense is kind of going through it right now. I'm looking for some big hits tonight, uh, getting some guys on and kind of coming through. And again, you know, we go back to the beginning of the ball game. We had a couple opportunities in the second, third inning. Of course, it was with two outs for the most part, but we just couldn't get anything done. Uh, you know, I think back to the fly ball to center field on the 2-1 pitch. Our best at bat just hasn't been showing up with runners in scoring position. And sometimes the best approach is to jump on that first pitch. So yeah, uh, did we get a big hit in a big spot? We most certainly did. Was it enough for the ball game? It was. We need to improve. We need to get better. I like the matchup tomorrow night, so I'm kind of hoping that we get some things done against Cologne. All right, before the game, Cubs manager Joe Madden did what Joe Madden does best. Coming into the series with teams off edge struggling, club had lost five straight. He brought a magician into the clubhouse <laughs> to try to lighten the mood. You heard me right. Here's Joe on the pregame guest. We're looking to create some magic, and that's not him up there. Uh, Simon was outstanding. Um, I could recap everything. The, 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 the soda can was incredible, uh, but the guy seemed to enjoy it. Um, just trying to line things up a little bit, and we're always trying, like I said, to create some magic around here, so why not bring a magician in? It was about time. Um, Tough series in St. Louis. I don't want our guys to get all distraught for the wrong reasons. Uh, we played a good team. They beat us. We've seen some good pitching. Let's keep moving it forward. All right. Did Tommy Lasorda ever bring a magician in? <laughs> Tommy never brought a magician. But he brought celebs all the time. Well, but celebs were there in Hollywood. But what he did bring in, he brought in some chefs. <laughs> you know, Tommy, he loved to eat, man. He, we had some great spreads, but that's about it. We just had to make sure we played well so that those spreads didn't get flipped over for, for poor performance. I would think some of the old school guys are going, he did what? Well, I mean, the game, today's game's a little bit different. I mean, we talk very proactively about our game. We know how hard this game is, but you think back to even when I broke into, the, you know, the big leagues, you know, if you didn't play well, there was a lot of screaming and yelling that would go on after the game. It doesn't go on nearly the same way. It is about a positive mindset. It's so much different now how the game is compared to what it once was. All right, we'll be right back. Cubs Post Game Live. We'll wrap it up for you. Presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Available. Excuse me, uh, you realize this television's on a channel with men in silk robes slapping each other? Mm -hmm. Maybe we could just switch it to where the athletes are wearing shoes? Mm -hmm. This gentleman and this gentleman want to know if we can change his channel. I love karate. He he doesn't like karate. What? No, me. You don't like karate? I do I love it. Are you kidding? I've been telling you how much I want to join a dojo. Could you recommend a dojo? Buffalo Wild Wings, 21 sauces and seasonings, tons of tops, and countless flat screens. Nowhere sports more alive. 
your TV, and your internet. Experience the two together like never before with a special offer from Xfinity and lock in your rate for two full years. Only Xfinity from Comcast gives you the X1 Entertainment Operating System with the cloud-based X1 DVR. So now anything you record is available on all your devices. Combine that with the fastest in-home Wi-Fi and get the most out of your entertainment. Get the X1 Triple Play for $99 a month for two full years and now get even more internet speed, up to 75 megabits per second. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit Xfinity.com today. All right, Cubs and Mets back at it tomorrow night at City Field in Flushing, New York. John Lester gets the start for the Cubs. He'll be opposed by Bartolo Colon, who's going for win number 10 this season. Well, John's going for win number 5, so that's what we're going to focus on here. Lester looking to be great. I think it's a good matchup going up against those Mets. But let me say this about Bartolo Colon. You saw the numbers there. He's only walked 10 guys in 71 innings. Yeah, he's going for win number 10, but he is very fastball aggressive. I'm hoping he is the prescription for these guys right now to get the swings back in line. You're going to see a ton of fastballs tomorrow night uh, from Bartolo Colon for our hitters. So hopefully that's a good matchup for us. All right. We will see just how John Lester pitches coming off a rough outing. Thank you for watching Cubs Post Game Live presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield. Cubs beat the Mets 1-0. Kyle Hendricks picks up the victory. Jonathan Neese, the tough loss. And the save goes to Jason Mott. Don't forget, Sportsnet Central coming up at 10. See ya. an egg laid by a hen, then inspected and collected over and over and over again. Cleaned and boxed and loaded so when it finally arrives at your McDonald's, it's ready to begin. Cracked and griddled and sizzled and placed on an Egg McMuffin, which is a nice start to your day every now and then. It's just an egg, but oh, what an egg it is. New McDonald's Bacon and White Cheddar McMuffin. White cheddar, thick cut bacon, and a freshly cracked egg. Get one in a small McCafe coffee for just $3.50. If you've been wishing for something amazing, at Cricket Wireless, we've got it. A special offer on the new Samsung Galaxy S6. Plus, we've got more 4G LTE coverage nationwide than T-Mobile or Sprint. Because a great phone deserves a great network. Cricket Wireless, something to smile. Moving is frustrating, but moving your direct TV isn't. Simply call before you move and we'll take care of everything. With our professional installation, your direct TV will be up and running before you unpack. That's one less burden as you celebrate your fresh start. The Direct TV Movers Deal. Call and ask about all the benefits today. And here we go, folks. It's your favorite hot dog bun, mustard, and overpriced watered-down beer. Are you sure you want to eat all that? Because you already weigh more than your team's batting average. Let's just toast to our anniversary. Oh no, it's corked. Let's just watch the game. I tweeted all of your friends to come over, but I guess no one showed up. Just like at Mobile Phone Park. That's okay. I invited one of your friends too. There's a long drive and it's out of here. Give a real anniversary gift this year. Escape to the Champagne Lodge in Willowbrook. Just 25 minutes southwest of Chicago. A conservative auction estimate on this jacket is thirty to 35000 This is a Hall of Fame collection. What more do you want out of it? He signed it and he looked up and he's like, hey guys, like how are you? And I was like, oh my god. It's an, a really important baseball. 1926 was a pivotal year for the Yankees. The police were waiting for me at the top of the hill. I end up going to jail for this. By the way, can I keep the gloves? I think you're going to need them. Thank you. <laughs> Most true sports fans have something they cherish, from a game they were at, a player they followed, or a team they loved. Greatness was saved, a piece of the game. Sponsored by Allstate. A 
piece of the game, where we take the show on the road and anyone can walk in with their sports treasures, big or small. You want the real price on what those memories are worth? Our independent experts, some of the best in the business, are here and asking, what do you got? When you find a winner, you stick with it. We're back at B-Dubs in Old Orchard Mall just outside Chicago. Hello, I'm David Kaplan. They're rolling out the wings, and we're ready to rock. Tell us, what do you got? Oh, uh, this is uh, my Lego mosaic of Hulk Hogan. And I brought it here to have uh, Hulk sign it. I think it'd make for a great story if you were to take it and just smash it over my head or his or something like that. It would have been fun to watch, if nothing else. <laughs> and he was great about it and reached right in. He said, let me center it up for you, the brother. So it's kind of cool that he gave me a brother. And I think I looked pretty close to him, but, you know, some people assure me that, you know, we're not related and it's possibly slightly stronger than me. Hey, what do you got? This is a uh, check from 1946 from Las Vegas to, from Tyrus Cobb. To get a check with his full name on it as Tyrus R. Cobb, I thought was pretty rare. And it was to a florist at, for $5.45 in 1946. Ty Cobb wasn't a nice guy. He sent him flowers. He was definitely not a nice guy. Uh, but he must have found a young lady <laughs> that for five bucks, back then it was probably a couple dozen roses. Hey, what do you got? Uh, well, today we're wearing our Carolina Panthers customized jerseys. Uh, I gave this to my wife as a wedding present. Uh, we were married on 8, 10, and yeah, she surprised me with a little panther on our wedding cake. Just a little touch. The wedding party was awesome. We have enough Panthers jerseys for everyone to put on and take pictures, so Great. they were all troopers. So you ran into the Panthers, Luke Keekley? Yes, he signed it and he looked up and he's like, hey guys, like how are you? And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> we all remember the Lakers and Showtime and some of their great players, Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul Jabbar. But did you know that the man that the logo the NBA still has to this day, the pattern after Jerry West, one of the great Lakers, was their GM, has worked in the league forever since his playing days. Jay Belshaw lives in Redondo Beach, California. Your father worked in the Forum Club where the Lakers used to play before Staples Center. And your dad became friends with Jerry. So how do you get this jacket? The Lakers lose in Game 7 of the NBA Finals in May of 1970 to the New York Knicks. This is the game that Willis Reed limped out of the locker room, started the game at Madison Square Garden. The fans went crazy. The Knicks went crazy and killed the Lakers. The Lakers came home on their flight, and they were dropping off their gear because the season was over. My father happened to be there that day, and he knew Jerry, and he went to Jerry and said, Jerry, my son happens to be you know, a great fan of yours. Is there something you can do? And so Jerry looks down in the pile, picks up the warm-up jacket, hands it to my father, and says, here, give this to your son. Ever since that time, it's basically been in my closet. You ever had somebody come look at it and say, you know what, you have no idea what the heck you're holding here. No idea what it's worth. Jerry West played his entire 14-year career with the Lakers. That's him, number 44 at an All-Star game. He was voted one of the NBA's 50 greatest players. Ever the team player in his native West Virginia, Jerry West Boulevard feeds into Don Knotts Boulevard. So what are we looking at here? Because that's an exceptionally cool piece. It is, it is. I had a chance to look it over. It's it's a phenomenal piece. Uh, Lakers logo, obviously, here on the chest. Uh, Jerry West's name is embroidered on the backside. Uh, the use is, is perfect. I mean, it's a season's worth of wear on it, which is what I would expect to see with a jacket like this. I have no doubt that it's, it's worn by Jerry West. When a collector is going to spend big dollars on a piece like this, they want to know its history. And you have an ironclad provenance here through your dad's relationship relationship with Jerry. How much is something like this worth? There was a Jerry West jacket that came up for auction not long ago. It was a little later model. Uh, it sold at auction for $29,000. Jerry West game-worn jerseys from his early days with the Lakers have sold for as much as $90,000. I believe a, a, a conservative auction estimate on this jacket is thirty to 35000 The fact that it's the day after Willis Reed, the famous you know Knicks win when he limped out of the locker room, does that add value? value to it at all? If, if it could be matched through video or photos to that game, I believe the value could as much as double. 50, 60 grand, are you selling this thing or? That's a very, very tough decision. The, the reason it's a tough decision is because how, how much I love Jerry West and, and, and how important the jacket has been in my life. Make know. sure you get this thing insured. <laughs> That's a good point too. 
So you wore that to school and everybody loved it? Oh, they did. Oh, it was unbelievable. Uh, you know, girls were chasing me around. Jerry West, Jerry West. No, no, it's not Jerry West, okay? <laughs> I'm just a little shorter than Jerry and not from West Virginia, you know? Hey, what do you got? Authentic helmet with a uh, Mean Joe Green on it, hand painted, and it, it looks like a decal and it's not. Since I was about seven years old, I've always rooted for the Steelers. Mean Joe Green wasn't so mean. Yeah, very nice. He actually don't like the mean Joe. He won't he won't put that on anything. <laughs> hey, what do you got? I got the 62 All-Star Game uh, program from Wrigley Field. I got it because uh, I went to the game. We got there at 6 in the morning trying to get a seat and waiting in line, and they opened uh, the bleachers, and we ran down there and got a first-row seat. Clemente hit a home run in batting practice and hit the, the elderly fella next to us on the top of the head, and he was bald and he was bleeding. And uh, You paid 50 cents for it back then. What do you think it's worth now? I don't know, maybe $50. What do you got? I'm Michael Olesker. I spent 30 years as a newspaper columnist in Baltimore, and uh, one night I got lucky enough to have dinner with Mickey Mantle at the Belvedere Hotel here in town. In the course of dinner, he had a few, and at one point I said to him, Mick, could you sign an autograph for my son, Eric? It's E-R-I-K. Mickey signed it and got Eric's name okay, but unfortunately misspelled his own name. Micey Mantle. I got the only autograph in history of M-I-C-E-Y Mantle. There may be no more famous college football program than the University of Notre Dame. Love them or hate them, you cannot deny the fact that their tradition is at the top of their sport. David Edgington comes to us from Chillicothe, Ohio, first capital of Ohio, yes, I might remind you. Yes, and he found us at a piece of the game.tv. He went on, said, here's my story. We brought him in. It can happen to you. David, thank you for taking some time. You're a big Notre Dame guy. You're in an online auction. There's a set of books from 1921 through 24 called The Dome. Your wife says, I'm interested in the clothing and the wardrobe and what they wore back then. You're interested in some other stuff. Take it from there. Well, after uh, looking at them a little bit and realizing 21 through 24 was the year that Coach Rockney was there coaching the Four Horsemen as well as the Seven Mules, I got excited. So we bid uh, $18. $18. $18. $18,000. 18, $18. And uh, I. I couldn't believe I got them. There was only two people bidding. So we get them home. I start looking through. I see signatures. I just seen signatures. I didn't see who they were. I was so excited. I put them in my closet for six months. Afraid to look. Afraid to look. I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't do it. Eventually, six months went by. I pulled them out, started looking through them. I found Coach Rocky's signature, and they were the personal uh, uh, yearbooks of Ed Hunsinger. Played the right end of uh, seven mules. Blocking for the four horsemen. Right, exactly. And uh, I just got stoked. All right, so has anyone ever come in, looked at these four books and said, hey man, do you realize what you've got here? No, no, I haven't. All right, how about we get an expert to come look at the books, look at the signatures, and kind of give you a thought what you might be holding. That would be great. All right, let's do it. All right. Sports writer Grant Lynn Rice named the Irish backfield the four horsemen. Uh, nobody is sure who labeled the linemen the seven mules. All four horsemen and two of the mules are enshrined in the College Football Hall of Fame. But it was Newt Rockney who made the horsemen and the mules run. But don't forget, man, we're going to get them on the run. We're going to go, 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 go. And we hunt for a stop until we go to goal line. All right, David, this is Amanda Peacock. She's Hi. curator of the Babe Ruth birthplace, and she is an expert in this type of Excellent. stuff. By the way, that is the coolest name we've ever had on this <laughs> thank show. Thank you, thank you. Well, you take now, a hold look. on there, Sparky. A good curator always wears their gloves. What do you mean there, Buttercup? It's, <laughs> it's a book. Keep the oils from damaging it more. Otherwise, you're going to have fingerprints all over it, and okay. you're going to devalue it for this nice gentleman here. All right. Mr. Nice Gentleman, I don't want to <laughs> devalue your books. Okay. Have you had a chance, before I pick this up without my curator gloves on. 
<laughs> as I pick this book up, there's a bunch of cool signatures in there. You got Newt Rockney. Is my man sitting on something pretty cool here? He's got a pretty great find here. The fact that he has four yearbooks from the same player that played on that, you know, four horsemen, seven mules team. He's got Rockney's signature. He has some other unique signatures in there, including a few of the four horsemen. He's got a great find here. Did he hit a home run? He hit it out of the park. Excellent. I'd say our price here is around $3,000 to $5,000. You're going to fly back with these books to Chillicothe, Ohio, but what if you got off the plane and Mrs. David says, where are the books? Uh, somebody bought them at Buffalo Wild Wings, paid five grand. What's she going to say? So, time to buy some shoes and go on vacation. So you're open for business if somebody wants to I'm talk. I'm open for negotiation, yes. That's thank you great. for being here, David. Thank you. Amanda, thank, thank you. you. By the way, can I keep the gloves? I think you're going to need them. Thank you. <laughs> 18 bucks. $18. You never know when you're going to find that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> We're back in the vault this month, and wait till you see what's in there. Next. A piece of the game, sponsored by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Remember when you said men are superior drivers? Yeah. Yeah. Then how'd I get this? Allstate safe driving bonus check. Who's that? So weird, right? My agent Tom said... Only Allstate sends you a bonus check for every six months you're accident free. But I'm a woman. Maybe it's a misprint. Does it look like a misprint? Okay, let's try. Silence. Ask an Allstate agent about the safe driving bonus check. Are you in good hands? In August 2015, the PGA Championship will return to Whistling Straits. Drama will unfold over every dome as the strongest field in golf collides. Go to PGAChampionship.com to purchase your tickets today. This is Major. This is the PGA Championship. A pitcher who can paint the corners is known as a Rembrandt. At GMC, we get why people love that kind of precision. After all, in everything we build, that's exactly what we deliver. This is Precision. This is GMC. Now pay no interest for five years, plus get 2,000 purchase cash on 2015 Sierra SLT models. Robots might build cars, but it takes human hands to keep them running right. Right now at Firestone Complete Auto Care, get a synthetic blend oil change for only $19.99. Firestone Complete Auto Care. Whatever you drive, drive on Firestone. In August 2015, the PGA Championship will return to Whistling Straits. Drama will unfold over every dome as the strongest field in golf collides. Go to PGAChampionship.com to purchase your tickets today. This is Major. This is the PGA Championship. Greatness was saved, a piece of the game. What's in the vault this month? Once in a while, we come across those rare items that require a little extra level of security. And outside the presidential bunker, we are one of the most secure vaults in the country. Been here for over 100 years. Nobody's ever broken into it. Dan Imler is the vice president of SCP Auctions, Laguna Niguel, California. And you guys have an amazing track record of just crazy, crazy cool items. Yep. You brought some baseball items here starting with this baseball that I am just infatuated with, I immediately jumped out and looked, oh, Babe Ruth. Yeah, 1926 right, yeah. Yankees. Tell us about this baseball. It's an, a really important baseball. 1926 was a pivotal year for the Yankees. Uh, they were coming off a disastrous season in 1925 where they actually finished in seventh place below 500, if you can believe that. A team led by the great Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and a slew of future yeah, Hall, Hall of Famers. Famers. Absolutely. No less than the president himself actually publicly called out Ruth, uh, saying he was letting down the youth of America. And Ruth took that to heart, as did the rest of the team and they rededicated themselves 1926 all the way back to the World Series seventh game and uh, the dynasty was restored so really a historic season and the ball is just in superb condition let's talk about the plaque here because Jimmy Fox one of the great sluggers of all time a triple crown winner 
Tell us what you brought. Well, two unbelievable Jimmy Fox items here. And Jimmy Fox, also known as the Beast, was really Ruth's rival as the great power hitter of the late 20s and 30s. And uh, he won back-to-back -back MVP awards in 1932 and 33. In 33, he won the Triple Crown. And we have his or original MVP award that he received for the 1933 season. This item, along with the jersey that we brought here, uh, were actually given by Fox to a close friend of his a few years before he passed away. This, this gentleman actually owned a pharmacy. These items, believe it or not, for a period of time were actually on display in a pharmacy. But this is the jersey he wore on a tour the Americans went over to play in Japan, and you were telling me it was the impetus to Japan be taking baseball as their national pastime. Absolutely, yeah. In 1934, Jimmy Fox, along with the other great American players at that time, including Ruth Gehrig and, and, and others, went to Japan and uh, played a series of, of exhibition games, and they were uh, received like, like royalty over there. And a uh, hugely successful tour, incredibly historic. And this is Fox's uniform that he wore in all 17 games that they played over there. All right, so you look at these three items. What are you, your opening bids for your spring collection? Do you have this auction going on at scpauctions.com? Well, for the ball, uh, the starting bid's going to be 10000 and we certainly expect it to go for a multiple of that. Uh, the plaque will start at 50000 and the jersey, uh, which also includes the pants, it's a full uniform, that will start at 100000 why is this so much more? Well, I, th I think for a lot of collectors, they want to get as close to the game as they can, and, and that's what these artifacts represent. There's really no substitute for something that the player actually wore on their back you know, on the field to play in piece action. Piece of the game. It's literally a piece of the game, and uh, I think for that reason, uniforms are among the most coveted objects in, in the field of collecting. All right, thank you for being here. My pleasure, Kevin. All right, and if you'd like to find out more, scpauctions.com. A classic set of hockey sticks from some great Hall of Famers. What are they worth? Next. SCP Auctions is one of the world's leading sports memorabilia auction houses. Nestled in beautiful Laguna Niguel, California, SCP Auctions provides first-class service when it comes to buying and selling sports memorabilia and cards. Whether you're an avid collector or just happen to inherit a special sports collectible, SCP Auctions can help you reach your financial goal. Visit us at scpauctions.com to sell your memorabilia and cards or to find that elusive sports artifact you've been hoping to add to your collection. And in this corner, a huge Honda inventory. And in this corner, outstanding customer satisfaction. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to save. Right now at Schaumburg Honda Automobiles, lease a brand new 2015 Honda Civic for just $199 down and only $199 a month. Be sure to see us before you buy. Bob Rohrman, Schaumburg Honda Automobiles, just eight blocks west of Woodfield Mall on Gulf Road in Schaumburg. Hey, White Sox fans, remember this? Long hits it into right, down the line, it is gone. And here in the 14th inning, the White Sox take a 6-5 lead. It's one of my favorite moments from 2005. Come see me, Jeff Blum, and my teammates July 17th through the 19th for a special 2005 World Championship reunion weekend presented by your local Ford stores. Tickets to all three games are on sale now, so visit WhiteSox.com today. Dad, like how many more weeks are you going to be using my car? Until my insurance claim goes through, this is our car. Mr. Parker, my parents have... Allstate. They have this... Claim satisfaction guarantee. Really? Their claim experience is... It's fast, fair, and hassle-free. Or they get their, like, money back. Sarah! Come to pro with me! Um, no. Hey, Mr. Parker. Claim satisfaction guarantee. Just another way Allstate is changing car insurance for good. Hey, what do you got? I have my hand here. I have Bo Jackson's last home run ball, 1986. He hit this monstrous home run ball right near the scoreboard. I ran across the pitcher's dugout wall, jumped down and slid down to the green grassy area, scooped up the ball. And the police were waiting for me at the top of the hill. I ended up going to jail for this. 
I wonder what this would be worth. Bo, you know. It's time for you to finally sign this. Hey, what do you got? In 2005, my wife was in Brimfield, Massachusetts at a field antique show and came across this uh, drum. The gentleman at the field told her that the drum came from Florida and believes that in the early 1900s, there was such thing as a Red Sox marching band. Would appreciate if anybody has knowledge of such a band back in those period of time. What do you got? I have a bat signed by 71 of the players from the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. I've always been a baseball fan, and my interest was piqued when the movie A League of Their Own came out. In the mid-1990s, a few of the players were attending a local event, and my husband surprised me with this custom Louisville slugger that we took to the event and had them sign. And I can't wait to tell my daughter about them when she grows up. Hockey is enjoying record-setting popularity here in Chicago. Ken Schatz is a Chicago native. Your father worked at the old Chicago Stadium. You're able to procure your dad's collection of hockey sticks they were able to give to you. Tell us about the backstory. There's some amazing things here. Apparently the sticks were uh, taken off the, the rink. Anyone that was used in the rink was taken off the rink and destroyed. And uh, Mr. Ruck, Paul Ruck Jr., who was the timekeeper at the stadium, got a few of them and brought them to my dad. Uh, they were friends through a, a, a business relationship. And uh, so he brought the sticks to my dad. And uh, through that, too, we got to know uh, some of the players and uh, uh, had them at the house periodically. They would come by uh, Christmas parties, things like that. And the players every year, when they had the Christmas party, they'd give my dad a Christmas stick. So this was the, the Christmas stick. It was signed by all the players and so forth. So you bring, I got two more at home. They're all signed by the players of those years, too. So. Got some amazing autographs. Like, for example, this stick belonged to Kenny Hodge. Yes. OK, I mean, you got Glenn Hall, one of the great goalies the Hawks have ever had. Yeah. Pierre Pilat. His number is retired. Lou Angotti, Phil Esposito, Bobby Hull. I mean, just crazy autographs yeah. that you got in there. Who else do you have here? Uh, we've got uh, Boom Boom Jeffrey on. Uh, Fall of from, Famer. Fall of Famer from Montreal. His numbers in the rafters there. Uh, this is Stan Makita's. And uh, also Hall of Famer, and then uh, Bernie Perrant, also uh, Hall of Famer. Have you ever had all this appraised? I have not. All right, how about I bring somebody out here and we tell you what you might be sitting on? That'd be great. Hockey and baseball players have one thing in common. They're both superstitious about their sticks. What is that? Chicken bone cross. Takes the curse off the bat that makes me hits. Consider Sid the Kid Crosby. No one is allowed to even touch his stick before games. And Wayne Gretzky dusted his stick with baby powder for good luck. Did it help? When you're called the great one, who's going to argue? So what's it worth? Next. If they make this, I'll eat the blazing wings. <laughs> This is no time for a change of heart, because before contracts were the size of Texas, a man's word meant something. So get back out there and show them what you got. That's going. Grab a seat. The game is on. Bumble the Wild Wings. Wing Spear Sports. You okay, we can't. Insurance was born online, which means fewer costs, which saves money. Their customer experience is virtually paperless, which saves paper, which saves money. They have smart online tools, so you only pay for what's right for you, which saves money. They settle claims quickly, which saves time, which saves money. They drive an all-hybrid claims fleet, which saves gas, which saves money. They were born online and built to save money, which means when they save, you save. Because that's how it should work in the modern world. Insurance, backed by Allstate. Click or call. Turning in the grain again The bells begin to chime Time, she says, there's no turning back You can pass down a Subaru Forester She's all yours But you get to keep the memories Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru the internet is full of crazy stories and rumors. But when it comes to the Cubs, you can bet the farm. CSNChicago.com is bringing you the facts. Patrick Mooney takes you into the dugout and up to the owner's box. Live post-game streams give you an instant reaction from Wrigley Field. 
Cubs Pulse shows you the stats and what's trending on the north side. From Cubs fans, for Cubs fans, the Cubs page on CSNChicago.com. Brought to you by Wintrust. Classic set of hockey sticks. What are they worth? All right, Ken, this is Dave, this is Scott. Okay. They are memorabilia experts. What do you think, Scott? Well, we talked about the, the sticks he has at home, too. They're in the same vein. These are great-looking sticks. Good news is they've got all the right markings. You've got the players' names on them, you've got the uniforms, you've got the autographs, and the proper models. This is a great collection, and considering what you have at home, too, a little bit of a collection could be worth up to $15,000. Dave, what do you think, buddy? You've got some uh, legendary names here. Uh, Boom Boom Jeffrey, on, for instance, was only the second NHL player with 50 goals in a season. Wonderful collection. I put the value at between 11 and 12,000. All right, so you're a little lower than our man. Okay, okay, okay wait, wait, wait. Dave's disagreeing with me again. <laughs> this is a Hall of Fame collection. What more do you want out of it? How about Gordy Howe? But he, he, he would be good. He's he would be good. <laughs> it's worth fifteen thousand dollars. All right, fifteen grand. But it's something you want to keep in your family. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you for being here, Ken. Thanks for bringing the collection. Thank you. Were you surprised about those prices? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I really was. Um, I, I guess I just uh, never thought even looking to try to get a price for it, and that uh, it was a lot more than I expected. That's for sure. Scott's estimate was higher than Dave's. Who do you agree with? Well, the high one for sure, absolutely. <laughs> What does high-strength, roll-form steel look like? Like this. Chevy Silverado. The first pickup to receive a five-star overall vehicle score for safety. High-strength steel for high-strength dependability. Every auto insurance policy has a number. But not every insurance company understands the life behind it. Those who have served our nation have earned the very best service in return. USAA, we know what it means to serve. Get an auto insurance quote and see why 92% of our members plan to stay for life. Thank you so much for joining us. A big thanks to our great sponsor, Allstate, the Good Hands people. To send us your videos, find out how you can join us. Maybe we'll fly you up. Just go to a piece of the game.tv and tell us, what do you got? We got Buffalo Bills helmets. Marv Levy on one side, James Lofton on the other side. Got the Intercontinental Championship title belt signed by uh, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. You can follow us at a piece of the game.tv. Drop us a line and tell us. What do you got? Guests of a piece of the game stay at the beautiful Omni Chicago Hotel, located in the heart of the city on Michigan Avenue. A piece of the game, sponsored by Allstate. Are you in good hands? When you paint with frog tape, something magical happens. Because frog tape is the only painting tape with patented paint block technology to give you the cleanest, sharpest lines possible. The patented paint block reacts with water and latex paint to form a microbarrier against paint bleed. Frog Tape Delicate even works on freshly painted surfaces, giving you maximum creative flexibility. For professional results when you paint, there's only one name to know. Frog Tape. Keeps paint out, keeps lines sharp. Tarek and Christina are back with all new episodes of Flipper Flop on HGTV. We are both good at different things, which makes us a really good team. The boss has spoken. We love remodels. We love before and afters. What a difference. The best part of it is the journey, the ride. All new episodes of Flipper Flop, Tuesday nights at 9 on HGTV. Regal Select Revive Paint from Benjamin Moore. Paint that's designed to stick to vinyl siding. Benjamin Moore. Paint like no other. Choices made right now, this very moment, will decide the rest of your life. With consequences that can never be reversed, if you drink and drive, you will lose your license. You will go to jail. 
So how do you get your hands on a sweater like this? All right, let's move to the piece de resistance. He is a very large man. What was Whitey Ford like? Snappy, very snappy. He put fear in the hearts of the visitors, I can tell you that. We might want to get Boomer a chair, because he's <laughs> going to want to sit down when he hears this. Has the IRS been looking for you? The IRS has not been looking for me. <laughs> Most true sports fans have something they cherish, from a game they were at, a player they followed, or a team they loved. Greatness was saved, a piece of the game. Sponsored by Allstate. A piece of the game, where we take the show on the road and anyone can walk in with their sports treasures, big or small. You want the real price on what those memories are worth? Our independent experts, some of the best in the business, are here and asking, what do you got? It's game on where the game is always on at Buffalo Wild Wings. Hello, I'm David Kaplan. They're packed in here today at the new B-dubs in the Old Orchard Mall just outside Chicago to see the show, enjoy the food, maybe have a cold one, and tell us, what do you got? I got a Peyton Manning three-foot bobblehead here. I uh, got an Ernie Banks three-footer, and I was lucky enough to have him sign it before he passed away, and I just love it. It's one of my prized collection pieces. And when I saw this online, I, I had to buy it. Put it on the counter for him. He found it amusing. He chuckled with it. Do you think that looks like Peyton? Oh, my God, exactly. Exactly. It's a little bit cross-eyed, but exactly. Is that a neck brace he's got on? He did ask it. He goes, is that a neck brace it's wearing? I'm like, uh, yes. <laughs> hey, what do you got? I got a photograph of uh, Mickey Mantle in the early 50s that I took down in Little Italy in Baltimore at the Roma restaurant. They called me up and said, come on down and take a picture of young Mickey Mantle. You have Moose Garin on there. You have Whitey Ford. What was Whitey Ford like? Snappy. Very snappy. He was really short. Yeah. He had the cigar in his mouth and it was really nice. Hey, what do you got? I have an Antonio Brown uh, autograph, 8x10, with my son Isaiah. Uh, he was a very, very nice guy. I mean, he's got the whole dance and everything. He actually, they were fist bumping, high fiving. What's up with him biting your ear? He's hungry. Nice haircut. It took him 30, 45 minutes. It's just an outline of his Steelers logo. You think he's the best receiver? Uh, he can be. He's not done yet. In January, the sports world lost one of its all-time greats. Hall of Famer Mr. Cub Ernie Banks died at the age of 83. That leads us to Boomer Berman, an Arizona native where the Correct. Cubs always had spring training. You came into possession of an Ernie Banks jersey. Uh, my uncle actually taught his kids, or coached his kids in basketball at the Boys and Girls Club in Scottsdale, which was like adjacent to Scottsdale Stadium where the Cubs were. And as a thank you, Ernie Banks gave my uncle his jersey, and it was just a nonchalant thank you for taking care of my kids. And then the year I was born, my uncle, knowing my dad's a diehard Cub fan, and I was going to be born into be a Cub fan, he presented me the jersey, and it's been hanging on my wall ever since. There's Ernie. Yeah, that's Ernie, that's me, and then my dad, big guy. And then this past year at uh, the Cubs convention, we brought the picture, and he signed the picture for us. Do you have this thing insured? It is not insured at the moment, oh, but it's definitely... I got a friend. He's a big highfalutin exec for Allstate. All right. We need to get him... I, I definitely need to talk to him. ...in Zoom. here and get for... you some insurance, because yes. I have a feeling this is worth some money. Yes. How about I bring a memorabilia expert out, okay. Rob Steinmetz. He takes a look. Sounds good to me. All right, let's do it. We got the team behind us, so let's play, too. Wrigley Field will always really belong to Mr. Cub. Ernie Banks played there for 19 seasons, all day games. Maybe that's why he didn't go gentle into that good ninth. And for Cubs fans somewhere, Mr. Cub still sings. Hey, hey, holy mackerel, no doubt about it, the Cubs are on their way. Hey, hey, hey! This is Rob Steinmetz. Okay, nice nice to you. Impart the wisdom on us. Is this worth anything? <laughs> That's the understatement of the year. As a Cub guy, as a collector, this is the stuff that geeks me out. Unbelievable. It's perfect in every regard. The, the anniversary patch is on the sleeve, original to the jersey. The use is exactly what I would expect to see on a game-worn Ernie Banks jersey. The tag is present on the inside of the collar where you can see his uniform number in the year. It's amazing. It's a, it's a 
unbelievable find. When you hear all this, did you realize you had something valuable? Deep down, I it was just more personally as being a Cub fan and having Mr. Cubs jersey for sure. Why don't you just tell him what it's worth? All right. Well, we went. We might want to get Boomer a chair because he's <laughs> going to want to sit down when he hears this. There's a couple things that play into the value of the jersey. One, provenance. The provenance that you have with this photo is ironclad. It's amazing. The other thing that we look at is what similar items have sold for in the past. A couple of these have come up for auction in recent years, and they've sold for astronomical amount of money. Um, Ernie's jerseys are among the most rare of all Hall of Famer game-worn uniforms. So what you have here is very, very special. In terms of value, if I were to put an auction estimate on this, I would start at the low end at $100,000, all the way up to $150,000 potentially, <laughs> which is what the two that I've sold for in recent years have gone for. So you need to call the guy from Allstate. Yes, I need to get Allstate on the phone. Yes, you do. <laughs> That's some big money there, Boomer. It definitely gives me pause, and it's it's something to uh, think about, and I, I have to discuss with the family and think about what we can do for the future. It's pretty insane uh, hearing that number when I, I had no idea. Hey, what do you got? So I'm Brian Riddle. I'm the head golf professional here at TPC Sawgrass, and today we have a little bit of history. We have the flag, the flag stick, and the cup that was used in last year in the 2014 Players' Championship. This is from hole number 17, one of the most iconic holes in golf, one of the most photographed holes in golf, for sure. So arguably, this is a priceless piece of history, but uh, for $1,500, you're able to take this home and have a little piece of history yourself. It's priceless, but I can have it for $1,500. Correct. You, we'll, we'll let you keep it for that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you got? I have a baseball, and it's signed by um, the famous Willie Mays. I was at spring training in 2012 with my great uncle, who's a broadcaster for the San Francisco Giants. And um, we went out to dinner, and Willie Mays happens to be there. I got to meet Willie Mays and got his autograph. I'm a huge Giants fan, and Willie Mays is my all-time favorite player. Hey, what do you got? Uh, I've got a custom 49ers suit and um, big 49ers fan wearing it out all the time at the big games. Got a full three piece on it. And uh, yeah, today just rocking the blazer though. My girlfriend seamstress as a hobby and uh, bought all the fabric and made it herself. Another thing that I got is Colin Kaepernick to sign it here. Also, I got uh, this helmet as well. To John, nice suit, Colin Kaepernick, number seven. I've never let anyone else try this on. I don't know. Kaepernick, I probably would have let him try it on. <laughs> Scott Steffens is a CPA. He is from Wheaton, Illinois. And we've seen jerseys and bats and balls and helmets and all different things. You found something that aligns with what you do for a living. You got Ray Nitschke's tax return from what, 1964? His uh, state and federal tax return from 19, the 1964 year. All right, first of all, how would you get your hands on Ray Nitschke's tax return? You know, this happened to come up in auction and it just seemed like a really neat item. And while I'm not a tax guy by trade, I'm a CPA and I'm always interested in kind of seeing how professional athletes made their money. And when this one popped up, you know, this is a copy that he filled out in his own hand uh, and then ultimately gave to his accountant and typed it and they signed that, that version and filed it with the IRS, and this was his personal file copy that remained. Ray Nitschke made how much in 1964 in the return you have here? He made $17,000. And he had to work in the off-season so he can make some extra money. What did he do? So he sold paper products for UO Colson, an old uh, company in Paris, Illinois. He sold calendars and paper fans and made $600 for doing that. Well, how about we bring out an authenticator who looks at it and says, Hey, Scott, do you realize what you've got here? Take a look. That'd be great. Here's how tough Ray Nitschke was. The Packers' practice field bleachers collapsed on him. A metal spike smashed through his helmet. Vince Lombardi ran over, saw it was Nitschke, and said, quote, he'll be fine, get back to work. And he did. Nitschke even named his dog Butkus after Bears' nemesis Dick Butkus. And remember the longest yard? Nitschke was the very tough guard, Bodensky. See you on the field, superstar. All right, Scott, this is Dave Zeman, Scott Beatty from AU Sports Memorabilia. Is something like this work? I've seen player contracts before. I've seen dozens of them. Player this level, you know, you might expect the contract go for two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000. So being that it's so unique, I, I would still place it in that same value. How about you, Dave? Well, I, I really like these pieces. I would put the value at a little bit less, uh, maybe around $1,500. They're tax returns. They're not contracts. So I, in my opinion, 
the desirability is just a little bit less. You can pick this up, you can almost read it like a book. It's, it's got his deductions, it's got his medical expenses, it's got the fact that he actually paid to have his uniform taken care of. I do really like this because my dad went to Proviso High School with Ray Nitschke, so I, I grew up hearing Nitschke stories. Your dad went to high school with Ray Nitschke? Yeah, same graduating class, 54, and my dad would tell me about not only how Nitschke would abuse players on the gridiron. Did he but abuse your dad a little bit? Go no, ahead. no, my, my dad was a football player, but uh, my dad also said that Nitschke could really pound the baseball. Uh, now, if you had Al Capone's tax returns, that would be a little bit more valuable. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well put. Yeah, I'm, I'm sticking with my number. I'm sticking with three thousand dollars. Okay, so three, four thousand dollars. What'd you pay for this? Uh, I paid two hundred fifty dollars for it. Two hundred and fifty bucks. Amazing how much he got paid back then, huh? Yeah, the, the, the little bit of money that he had, it's amazing how low the dollars were relative to what the what the demands were of a professional football player. Has the IRS been looking for you? The IRS has not been looking for me. <laughs> <laughs> These Michael Jordan Nikes are so valuable, they're in a vault even John Dillinger couldn't break into. And wait until you hear how the owner got them next. A piece of the game. Sponsored by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Remember when you said men are superior drivers? Yeah. Yeah. Then how'd I get this? Allstate safe driving bonus check. Who's that? So weird, right? My agent Tom said... Only Allstate sends you a bonus check for every six months you're accident free. But I'm a woman. Maybe it's a misprint. Does it look like a misprint? Okay, uh -uh. let's try... Silence. Uh -oh. Ask an all-state agent about the safe driving bonus check. Are you in good hands? Hey, Ralph, that's traveling. What the heck's going on out there? That's flagrant. Bo needs my help. What? I'm from Camp, Wisconsin. You need to have some fun. Wisconsin. Amazing what a little fun will do. When she comes, she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. One day, a rider made a decision. I'm ready. The decision to ride on and save money. He decided to save money by switching his motorcycle insurance to Geico. There's no shame in saving money. Ride on. Ride proud. Geico Motorcycle. Great rates for great rides. Hey, Chicago. Now you can keep your drinks as cold as the Rockies with your very own Coors Light Refresherator. Enter for your chance to win one of 15 limited edition silver bullet vending machines from now until June 30th. Visit csnchicago.com slash Coors Light to enter. Keep the world's most refreshing beer cold with your very own Coors Light Refresherator. The perfect addition to your home bar or man cave. Greatness was saved, a piece of the game. What's in the vault this month? Once in a while, we come across those rare items that require a little extra level of security. And outside the presidential bunker, we are one of the most secure vaults in the country. Been here for over 100 years, and nobody's ever broken into it. No one's getting their hands on these items that Terry Melia from SCP Auctions, scpauctions.com, Laguna Niguel, California, brings to us some amazing stuff here, starting with John Wooden's sweater that he wore at practice the guy won 10 titles in 12 years. He, uh, any Mount Rushmore of great coaches in the history of our country, he's on it. Absolutely. 620 uh, career victories for the Bruins. Never had a losing season, which is remarkable in itself. And, of course, that great 88-game winning streak. So how do you get your hands on a sweater like this? This actually has changed uh, hands twice now, uh, but will be the first time going up at auction. What's interesting about John Wooden is he is the first player coach to ever be inducted in the Hall of Fame on both levels. So that in itself makes this a super special, super rare piece. All right, let's move on to an unbelievable football jersey. Tell us what you brought here. This is from 1951. 
Uh, this was worn by Ali Matson, an African-American running back for the University of San Francisco. He led the nation in rushing and scoring, led the Dons to a 9-0 perfect season, and yet finished ninth in the balloting for the Heisman Trophy. 9-0, they don't get a bowl invitation. Finally, at the last second, they get a letter. Yeah, we'll put you in the Orange Bowl, but your two African-American players, they can't come and play. And they said, our guys don't come, we don't come. That's right. So this jersey, uh, besides success on the gridiron, it also demonstrates camaraderie and loyalty amongst teammates. So it's a strong historical piece. All right, let's move to the piece de resistance. The first known NBA game-worn pair of shoes autographed by Michael Jordan. What makes these so special is he wore these during the first uh, six weeks of the season. The game in which these were acquired from was December 2nd, 1984 against the LA Lakers at the Fabulous Forum. And they were acquired by the Lakers ball boy who uh, had the audacity to walk up to Michael during pregame warmups and say, can I have your shoes? But at the end of the game, he remembered to give them to Khalid Ali who was uh, resting comfortably right outside the Bulls locker room when Michael came out. He had the shoes in hand and actually pulled a pen out of his duffel bag and signed both shoes for Khalid. What does he do with them? He keeps them in his closet for 31 years. Well, it was interesting in that first year, in order for them to actually turn a profit on their deal with Michael, they had to sell $4 million worth of shoes. That would be in 1985 when the shoes were unveiled. They wound up selling $70 million worth of product. So uh, they did very well. All right, so you put these three items up. What is the jacket going to open at? The minimum starting bid on that is $25,000. Uh, the minimum starting bid on Ali Matson's uh, game-worn University of San Francisco jersey is $2,000. And of course, the uh, Nike Air Jordans will start at $5,000. $5,000 and everything's going to go way north of that, I would think. Absolutely. Terry, thanks for being here. Good to be here, Dick. You can go to scpauctions.com and find out some of the other really cool items they have up for auction. We'll also tell you what these items went for a little later in the show so you can make your educated guesses at home. After Nolan Ryan threw a 6-0 hitter, he did something you won't believe with this lineup card. We'll tell you next. SCP Auctions is one of the world's leading sports memorabilia auction houses. Nestled in beautiful Laguna Niguel, California, SCP Auctions provides first-class service when it comes to buying and selling sports memorabilia and cards. Whether you're an avid collector or just happen to inherit a special sports collectible, SCP Auctions can help you reach your financial goal. Visit us at scpauctions.com to sell your memorabilia and cards or to find that elusive sports artifact you've been hoping to add to your collection. Hey, White Sox fans, Jim Tomey and the Bull Sox Academy are hosting two White Sox Silver Slugger camps this summer. These four-day camps will include three instructional days that will teach the kids the fundamentals of baseball and one exciting White Sox game day experience, including a tour of U.S. Cellular Field, two tickets with a special viewing of White Sox batting practice before a game, and much more. Jim Tomey will be present on one of the days each week to interact with the kids and sign autographs, but space is limited, so sign up today at BullsSoxAcademy.com. Most definitely, bro. Well, you know we're going to be celebrating tonight. So if the Hawks win tonight, then the parade's going to be what, Thursday? Hopefully. Superstitious? A little. So if we win tonight, we're going live immediately from ice level, right? Yeah, if we win. What are we going to do after the Blackhawks win tonight? Let's go find the cup. Champs or champions? Champions. Weeknights, don't miss Sports Talk Live on Comcast Sportsnet. David Kaplan leads a roundtable on the day's hottest topics. We're developing into this group. Um, we're starting to really believe when you're able to win games late on a consistent basis. It becomes part of the fabric. Interview Chicago's biggest stars. I had a great opportunity to come here and play at Chicago. This team is, is moving the right direction, and I wanted to be a part of it. And interacts with you, the viewer. Sports Talk Live, presented by the all-new Chevy Silverado. Weeknights on Comcast Sportsnet. Dad, like, how many more weeks are you going to be using my car? Until my insurance claim goes through, this is our car. Mr. Parker, my parents have... Allstate. They have this... Claim satisfaction guarantee. Really? Their claim experience... It's fast, fair, and hassle-free. Or they get their, like, money back. Sarah! Come to bro with me! Um, no. Hey, Mr. Parker. Claim satisfaction guarantee. 
Just another way Allstate is changing car insurance for good. What do you got? This is Levin Hernandez's jersey. He wore it during the first pitch in Washington Nationals history. It is very, very large. He's a very large man. It's interesting. Levin, when he came out of the game, was so excited, he tore the jersey off of him. The only problem was they only had two jerseys, two away jerseys. So they actually sewed it up and made him wear it again. In fact, sometimes I think the best thing to do with this is to use as a curtain at my house. Hey, what do you got? Hi, uh, my name is uh, Luis Garcia. I'm the general manager for Buffalo Wild Wings Hall Orchard. Definitely I have uh, this beautiful piece from 1985 from the Chicago Bears when they won the Super Bowl. Walter Payton is a classic fridge, yes. And the picture that I like the most is Jim Cover. I love his hair. It's probably the most beautiful hair I've ever seen. You know, I used to wear the hair like that a long time ago. A little higher than that. All right, imagine spending more than 40 years in minor league and major league clubhouses as the equipment manager, starting at the age of 14. Zach Manassian comes to us having worked for the Texas Rangers, the L.A. Dodgers. Unbelievable things, stories, and stuff you got to see. Some of the things you saw, obviously, were, were part of history, and, and uh, this certainly is one of those things. Uh, Nolan Ryan's sixth no-hitter. When Nolan Ryan got on the mound, he could throw a no-hitter at any time. He put fear in the hearts of the visitors, I can tell you that. What do you remember of that day? The biggest thing I remember is ha seeing Nolan uh, come from the bullpen to the bench. And as he came in, he told the pitching coach at the time, Tom House, he wasn't feeling that he had good stuff. Uh, he bounced a few pitches in the bullpen. We know what happened. He went out and pitched his sixth no-hitter. So the game ends. Everybody's mobbing Nolan Ryan, except one guy, you. That's Where'd right. you go? I headed right to the dugout wall and pulled this card, which is normally taped on the wall with athletic tape. Yep. I grabbed the card and stuck it under my shirt and took it into the locker room after the game. I offered him the card. He was gracious enough to sign it and give it back to me and tell me to keep it. And you got a game ball on top of it. I pulled a game ball from the bag and I used my family tickets uh, and probably in the collage, something that's most near and dear to me is the photograph of Nolan on the bench and that 10-year-old bat boy standing next to him blowing a bubble and looking out on the field is my 10-year-old son Perry and Perry is now the pro scouting director for the Toronto Blue Jays. Have you ever had some experts come out and look at it? I never have. How about I bring a couple of guys out here? Let's do that. After Nolan Ryan's sixth no-hitter, this appeared in the Dallas Morning News. He is a 43-year-old man who will have his aching back examined Tuesday morning. But Monday night, Nolan Ryan was Superman. Ryan was the oldest man to pitch a no-hitter. For an encore, one year later, he pitched another at the age of 44. All right, Zach, this is Steve Hart, Peter Kiefer from the Baseball Card Exchange. I do. Okay, Zach spent 40-plus years in baseball. How about this from Nolan Ryan's sixth no-hitter? Yeah, this was an amazing piece. I was, wow, just blown away by looking at this and trying to just figure out, like, how do you put a price on something like that? A lot of collectability here. What do you think, Steve? What's so impressive to me is that not only is there three Hall of Famers on here right now, Ricky Henderson, Dennis Eckersley, and, of course, Nolan Ryan, there's three other guys on here who their future will be decided by the voters, Conseco, McGuire, and Raphael Palmero. And I thought it was interesting, too, Conseco and McGuire were down here. Not, their names not even crossed out on the bench. We were they didn't even go that. out there that day. When they saw who was pitching that night, maybe they got a cold. Exactly. <laughs> what is something like this worth? You know what? If the no-hitter happened today, Major League Baseball's taking this thing off the wall before you could even get there. They're going to go take it to auction and sell it themselves. So what's it worth next? Wings. <laughs> this 
This is no time for a change of heart, because before contracts with a size of Texas, a man's word meant something. So get back out there and show them what you got. Go, 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 go. The Dan, the myth, the man. Have fun. The best of the Dan Patrick Show, weekdays on CSN Chicago. Who's with me? Are you kidding me? Come on this side of the glass and say that to me, you little punk. I can't believe they let us do this show. Catch the best of the Dan Patrick Show, weekdays at 4.30 on CSN Chicago. Seriously, I can't. Every night, get ready for the most dynamic show in Chicago. Epic highlights. Eight at time. The hardest hitting interview. We've got a good bullpen. These guys are all young and getting better. Your city, your teams, your show. This is Sportsnet Central. Every night at 10 and 10.30, presented by GMC, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Flashback to October 23rd, 2005. Paul Canerco's historic seventh inning Grand Slam in Game 2 of the World Series. Goosebumps, yes. Twitter, nope, didn't exist. But if it did, you would have that moment in gifts, tweets, and more gifts forever. Now, if something like that happens this year, at CSN White Sox, we'll bring you the moment, the moment it happens. And at this moment, follow Insider at CSN Hayes. If you're into sports cards and sports memorabilia, you've got to get to Baseball Card Exchange on U.S. Highway 41 in Sherrillville, Indiana, just 30 minutes from downtown Chicago. With over 13,000 square feet, we have the Midwest's largest inventory of sports cards and sports memorabilia from your favorite teams and players. I've been to baseball card shops all around the country, and this is the best one. These pieces from Nolan Ryan's six no hitter are on the table. What are they worth? We did find, you know, similar pieces out there. On the high end, we actually found a uh, Cal Ripken Jr. It was his uh, 2,131st game, that record setting game. That sold for $13,000. This one, you know, maybe it's not as significant as that game there, but very close. Looking at that piece, maybe five to $7,000 range. I even think that with the popularity of Nolan Ryan collectors, if you get the right people competing for this, you're looking at $10,000 or slightly more than that. This isn't something a collector bought. You were actually there. Right, it'll be in my family um, for years to come. What did you think when Nolan gave you the card? It was just so cool. He has two sons. He could have taken it and said, I want to give it to one of my boys. He's nice enough to give it to me, and that meant a lot. Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? I don't see why. Why? I think I sacrificed a lot of things at a young age. And in the long run, it's going to help me. At the Bull Sox Academy, we give each kid one mission. Dream it, train it, be it. Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? I don't see why. Why? I think I sacrificed a lot of things at a young age. And in the long run, it's going to help me. At the Bull Sox Academy, we give each kid one mission. Dream it, train it, be it. Thank you so much for joining us. A big thanks to our great sponsor, Allstate, the Good Hands People. To send us your videos, find out how you can join us. Maybe we'll fly you up. Just go to a piece of the game TV and tell us what do you got? Um, we have a WCW authentic replica belt. Yesterday we had Ric Flair sign it on this side. Authentic helmet for the hand painting of Joe Green. You can follow us at a piece of the game TV. Drop us a line and tell us 
What do you got? Guests of a piece of the game stay at the beautiful Omni Chicago Hotel, located in the heart of the city on Michigan Avenue. A piece of the game, sponsored by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Hey, Chicago, beer money is on the move, and you can be a part of all the fun. Join us for our next taping, Thursday from 6 to 9 p.m. at Hawkeye's Bar and Grill in Chicago. Beer Money, presented by Coors Light. I'm Robin Ventura, and you're watching the home of White Sox baseball, CSN Chicago. Sportsnet Central, presented by GMC. I haven't thought too much about it. You know, I'm still learning too. It's my first time going through it, so I'm sure I'll meet with my agent here pretty soon, and we'll talk more about it. But uh, the goal is to get something done here in Chicago. To play in the NHL is the goal, and, and to win, and uh, I couldn't be happier in Chicago. I've said it before. It's about winning, and uh, we have a tight group here. Uh, I'm close with a lot of the guys, and it, it's fun out there on the ice and off the ice. So uh, it's the goal is to be in Chicago. Well, money talks, and with two championship rings, Brandon Saad wanted to get paid, and he will, by Columbus, the tune of over $6 million per year. Surprising news alert today, considering we heard all season, and even after the Cup celebration, the Hawks plan on getting a deal done with the restricted free agent, Brandon Saad. In the end, Saad didn't want to play money ball with the Blackhawks, so on the eve of Saad likely getting a huge offer sheet that the Blackhawks couldn't match, they decided to acquire four players and part ways with a power forward on the verge of being an all-star. Uh, it's difficult to make trades sometimes, especially in a case like this, when you have a, a young man like Brandon, um, who you think highly of. But uh, this is a business, and you know we have uh, a job to do. And my job is to prepare our team for next season to remain uh, competitive and uh, to have a chance to win the cup again next season and sometimes that involves difficult decisions um, and you know it's a, it's a challenge to, to try to negotiate a contract and we gave it our best shot I think that was Patrick Sharp trying to call in during, <laughs> during the conference call. So Brandon Saad, surprisingly, the first major piece to be moved this offseason. Welcome to Sportsnet Central, presented by GMC. Mark Shinowski, Pat Boyle with you tonight. Didn't expect to be covering that story. We we'll walked into no. the office this afternoon. The 22-year-old power forward Saad was expected to be a foundation piece for the Hawks' future, but as Pat just told you, his contract demands forced this trade to Columbus. Let's look at it in totality. The entire seven-player deal forward Alex Broadhurst, defenseman Michael Pagliotto will join Saad in Columbus. The Hawks get four players plus a 2016 draft pick in return. 6'4 centerman Artem Anisimov is the key player coming back. Stan Bowman is working to sign him to a contract extension already. The Hawks also will get promising 20-year-old forward Marco Dano, forward Corey Tropp, and they reacquire forward Jeremy Morin. Here's our expert analyst Eddie Olchik on the deal. I think you got to look at this from a lot of different angles. Uh, you know, the, the cap issues that the Blackhawks have, uh, Brandon Saad being a restricted free agent, and the threat of an offer sheet being out there, meaning that if somebody at, at uh, 12.01 tonight could sit there and drive the bus of Brandon Saad and the Blackhawks and dictate the terms on the contract uh, that the Blackhawks would be negotiating with Brandon Saad, and the Blackhawks just being very proactive uh, in getting to this point. Now, when you look at it as a hockey trade, as a hockey guy looking at it and breaking it down, I mean, I really like Artem Anisimov. Like, I think he is a really, really good two-way player. Uh, I think he could play in a second-line center position or he can play in a third-line checking role. I mean, I think he's that type of a player. Like, he is very versatile. He has better skill than people realize. Uh, I, lo I really like the player a lot. High praise from Edzo on Anisimov. So you've heard the deal. You've had some time to digest it. What, about six hours or so? What's your reaction to Brandon Saad being traded to Columbus, the man-child leaving Chicago? We'll have uh, some of your